there, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, just wanted to let you know I'm experimenting with a new camera. So hopefully this video will be better than what I've been doing, but uh, we'll see. Tonight I'm going to do a hand-painted glass with a, it's an actual combination of two, uh, I guess you would say two different colors of blue and white. Just a uh, pretty little glass, just a made-up flower not really supposed to be a specific flower and uh, just something easy like I said I'm trying to just do easy designs for people to be able to do these on their own again uh, this is going to be the red wine glass it's the 20 ounce made by Libby glass and let's get started all right I'm going to use Thicket Green, Wicker White, Aqua, Cerulean Blue, which I absolutely love, Fresh Foliage, School Bus Yellow, I need to get a better, a better yellow, I mean as far as the container, that one's really old and yellow ochre. Brushes that I'm going to be using, this is the first time I've actually used this brush that I can remember. If I've used it before it's not been on any any specific uh, glass or whatnot. But it's a three-quarter inch pointed oval. I don't know if any of you have heard of that before. This is a three-quarter inch flat brush. It's a one-stroke brush. And then this is going to be a three-quarter inch scruffy brush. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to start by painting the inside of the flower. And this particular uh, painting that I'm going to be doing is actually something that sometimes when you're doing a reverse painting, you have to really let the what you painted, because you're doing it in reverse painting, what you would typically see or paint last is being painted first so you have to let allow it to dry. Well with this particular flower what I did is I was able to paint it just by using a blow dryer or if you have a heat gun you can do that too and it's it I'm doing it all at one time and not having to really um, take a break or you know allow drying time for it. So I'm going to use the this line right here as my guide you can tape yours off if you want your center to come up at a specific height. If you've followed any of my videos, you'll know that that's not a concern to me. I don't really care if it's exact like the other one. Now, like this is coming down a little bit too far, but as you see when we're doing this, doing this painting, yeah. Alright, sorry about that interruption. I have a Blue Hiller puppy mix that uh, can be a little crazy at times and she was basically trying to get my older dog to play who really doesn't care to play as much as she does. So she barks, so again I apologize for that interruption. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and this would typically be the center of the flower. And I'm going to lay it in here first. Just keep turning your glass as you're painting. And I'm doing the school bus yellow and the yellow ochre together. Really not a big contrast. If you want more of a contrast, then you know, use either two different colors or further apart in shades than what I'm doing. But it's alright. I I like the the way it looks. Like I said and, and for the point of the video I'm making this just a very simple, simple, simple piece. so that it's a beginner level. Alright, so then the next step would be to 
either allow this to dry maybe for about an hour or so or to hit it with a hair dryer or a heat gun. Alright, so then for the petals of the actual flower I'm going to be using my oval. It's the pointed oval brush that I showed you. Um, on here it has Silver Crystal 68095. These were some brush, new brushes that had come out a while back. And I, like I said, really haven't experimented too much with them. But basically I am loading in three colors on my brush. And this is what it'll look like. And then on the tip I basically have the white. I'm trying to show you. Um, you can do some little stroking here if you want to start off and then pull it down. Feel free to go back over it and you know, to fill it in. This brush is kind of weird and I'm probably not reusing it right maybe. And if somebody else has used one of these, maybe give me heads up on what I'm doing wrong. Or maybe I'm doing it right and just uh, getting a look that I'm not really sure about. But I feel like it's it cuts off, you know, even though I, I much as I tried to turn my brush, you know, it, see it has like a little angle here. I'm not really certain how to get rid of that. But I like the size of the petals just to be doing something different because I feel like I, I'm painting with the same colors and kind of similar flowers and I thought, hey, let's mix it up a little bit and do something a little different tonight. And I'm sorry, I did kick my dog out, but they're still upstairs barking, so I'm sorry if you can hear them. Apologize for the dis the distraction. She's a noisy little one tonight. And the thing of it is with, with her, she has a tendency to be very destructive and get into everything for attention. Love her to death, but she's definitely, definitely a challenge. So I say the craziest dog I've ever owned. All right, and as I'm doing this, just a reminder, make sure you clean your glassware before you paint on it. Preheat your oven with the glassware in it. Place your glassware in a cold oven, always. I don't care what paint you're using, what manufacturer you know, handles the paint. Make sure that you, you follow that. I do highly recommend you following the instructions from the manufacturer as far as the bake time, but pretty standard as far as placing your glassware in a cold oven and then turning it on. And also to keep in mind that once your glassware is finished baking, give it that time to cool before you remove it. You'll be glad you did. You won't be wasting your, your talent and having it shatter in front of you. I mean, can you see Maybe doing this as a project, just a fun, something fun to do with girlfriends. You know, it's an affordable, you can go to, I know a lot of people that have used dollar store glassware and been perfectly happy with it. I love Libby Glass. So that's who I, that's the brand I stick with. Just, I've had good results. It's nice glassware, not real pricey. And, you know, you can't, you can't really beat it for the quality of it. Plus it's made in the U.S. All right, so I have put a hair dryer on this to give it uh, some drying. Uh, before I do the next step, which I like to go back over the center of the flower 
just to kind of try to neaten up these edges since I pulled this down. Now I am going to say, if you were painting a sunflower, which I would paint very similarly to this, maybe using different brushes, it's fun to go ahead and, and pull your, your petals, flower petals, in from the wet paint as opposed to drying it like I am here. I just didn't, with the colors that I'm using, I just didn't want to pull pull this yellow into the center of, of the flowers or the flower petals themselves. If you want to, that's great. Obviously, you can use different colors. I, again, am just using these colors. thought they were kind of fun and something different because I tend to use the pinks and the berry a lot. And this way it just gives it um, just something different, something more whimsical than what I'm normally painting. I'd love to hear your comments. Please comment below. Uh, let me know if you have a favorite flower that you'd like to see painted or my rendition of your favorite flower. Um, if you want to paint along with me, I'd love to have you do that. Eventually I probably will be doing some live painting, getting into doing that. But right now I'm just focusing on doing the videos and uh, getting getting them done, you know, trying to perfect that a little bit more before I get into actually doing real-time stuff. But you can see this kind of neatens it up a little bit. So you're not seeing those ends. And so far, hopefully you're, you're being able to view this better than what you have in the past. Alright, now I hit the Gloss with the hair dryer again because the next step is going to be to paint these leaves on it. Whoops, sorry. Paint these leaves on it. So I wanted this to be somewhat dry. Again, if any of the colors pull into it, that's fine too. Not a big deal. But we are going to go ahead and continue on. The next set of colors I'm using are Thicket and the fresh foliage. Yeah, they, they, those two colors work out pretty well together. My favorite would be Thicket and the Forest Moss. But I, I like the fresh foliage too. I'm okay with that. You know, you'll see some people will use white with the Thicket. Thicket is the darker green, which I really like. Some, you know, as opposed to more of a Christmassy color paint. I'm not really a big fan of not that I don't like Christmas, because I do, but I like this darker, darker green. Alright, and I'm just going to do this kind of a leaf. Try to get about four of them in. Just try to get make sure that they cover. And this way you can see that the glass can be finished, can be painted from start to finish without having to give hours worth of drying time in between. When you get into doing like polka dots or lines of some sort, you know, a lot of times those are a little bit thicker. So the drying with the hair dryer, maybe a heat gun would be better, but that often and it does cause a, a lag time in your, your creating process. And like I said, for the purpose of the video, I kind of like to pick things that I can do start to finish without having to, you know, take days to do a video. So when I get a chance to do one, I want to get it done. And I'm going to just pull the line down the center here, and it's a little bit light for me. So I'm going to go back in here and do it again. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Now you can overlap the leaves a little bit. They don't have to be spaced out perfectly. And also another question I get often is, just thinking of this while I'm painting, 
is if you need to place your glassware on something when you're baking it. The main thing I would say is you don't have to. Um, you can. You, know, you can put it on a baking sheet if you want. Just don't have the, the paint touching like your rack or the baking pan or whatnot. Don't have the painted part of that touching anything. Because that may not turn out well. I typically just stick them, you know, if the glassware is big enough to stand okay on the actual racks themselves. I don't really go through a lot of fuss of putting them on anything in, in particular, you know, a baking pan or sheet, whatever. I don't do it. But I also do have an oven that is pretty much, other than like for holidays, is uh, I purchased it for the purpose of baking glass so just keep that in mind this paint is non-toxic so that's really not an issue I don't I wouldn't be afraid to use it in an oven so it really is it's non-toxic just trying to clean up this edge here a little bit better Up to you though, you know, whatever your preference is. Alright, we're getting close to the finish line. So you could see how, you know, have some have some friends over. Or if you're having a party, as I've mentioned a few times in my videos, I got started doing the glass painting, trying desperately to find something to do a business with. Some friends of mine had a margarita party, and you had to bring a glass, wrap it up, bring a glass that you will, you'd sit on the table, and then everybody picks one, and then that's the glass they drink from for the rest of the evening, and then they actually get to take it home. Well, I didn't want to just go out and buy any old glass, so, but hey, why not? I'll paint them. I'll paint my own. And I did. And that's when I thought, oh my gosh, I really like painting on glass. It's so, you know, it's so easy. The flow of the paint is just wonderful when you're painting on glass. And the great thing, too, because I'd always painted on walls, was the fact that if for some reason I didn't like what I painted, I can wash it off and start again. Not a biggie. Not a biggie. And you can see the advantage of that. So that's where you know, I went from, I don't know, just trying all kinds of things, which I think a lot of creative people do anyways. You always, you, you always continue doing that until you, until you die. I think if you're a creative person, as long as mentally you're with it, Yeah, the wheels don't stop turning just because you age. Even though my age, I'm starting to feel it. So I think I'm liking my new camera. Alright, so we're done with that. You can see what that looks like. And then what I'm going to do, I did on the last one like I showed you, is just kind of come through here and clean up these edges. And I went over that flower a little, or that leaf a little, but that's okay. Not a biggie. And then when I come too far down on the stem,
And if you want it to be even around on that, the stem part on the bottom here, you know, just go around to make sure it is. You know, like I said, you could do dots, you could do um, some kind of line of some sort just to clean it up. Or you could just leave it. You really didn't have to do anything. But I decided to do that. I could go all the way down the stem if I wanted. But, I, but for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to leave it as such. So you can see, you know, just a, just kind of a whimsical glass, kind of funky. It's a fun little glass you could do, like I said, with, with friends or if you were going to have a party. How much fun is this as opposed to drinking out just a plain old glass, even if it is a wine glass? hand-painted glassware is awesome. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel so that you can see more of my videos. Like and share my videos if you would. I'd appreciate it. Leave a comment below. Give me your favorite flower and I'll see what I can do about painting some type of a design with that flower on a glass. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'd appreciate it. Appreciate you stopping by. Have a good evening and until the next video, I will see you then.